Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to talk about one of my still frame. I did this in, in like uh, one month ago and shared in Instagram. And actually Damien from Motion Designs community just asked me to do a breakdown in how I did this web structure. So this is the, the final render I did in Redshift and the whole project is done in Houdini. But the modeling I did is like I think two years ago and I used Substance Painter for texturing. So let's quickly jump to Houdini. I'm going to show you how I did this. So first here is uh, my objects here is set up for the geometry. So basically I have a file and I just read the robot. This is the base, the basic model, and just blast it. You know this platform. Just change the size, and here because I want to have a like a basic quick setup for it's falling down into uh, to the web structure, and I don't want it to do everything by hand. So I just did a assemble and create a pack geometry and also here exactly the same but it is only the name attribute so also I use the connect adjacent pieces node to get some connection between different parts of the robot because let me show you the different different parts so yeah this is the actual robot so all the pieces you can see so I just did a connect the adjacent pieces and set the adjacent pieces from surface point and this is actually is going to create the lines between the center of each geometry each uh, pack geometry actually but you know this is because this one is not actually the pack this is a pack geometry this is not but because it has an like a name attribute so it's going to create in the center of each uh, piece so and here is just a simple attribute triangle to create the constraint the name is glue and type is all and here is just simulation very simple just an rbd object the rigid body solver and here is my constraint network as you can see here it's just connected all the pieces together and I use just just a bullet soft uh, constraint here, but I named this glue because the reason is I, I actually first I did the glue, but it couldn't hold the pieces uh, the way I wanted, so I just wanted to be to fall apart, but have a little bit uh, kind of like stick together, but it's not like very rigid. Uh, dynamic simulation so ju just just use this this soft constraint and you can see if I do this and this is uh, the static object so I just merge a gravity and I just did a simulation this is static object actually is the, just the, the plane I use the vellum solver to simulate it so if I go up here is just my grid and I did the vellum cloth, just the basic one. I didn't much settings, just the stiffness, and just created like pinpoints to hold the cloth in here and the here and here. So and after that is just a vellum solver. I didn't change anything in the solver, so it's very basic as you can see. And I just run the simulation. I just cached one frame. I think maybe around here somewhere like this I just cache it and I use it as a collision geometry here in static so if I go here let me turn on the points and if I just play you can see it is the robot fall apart and it's kind of hold the pieces leave it together nicely so it's kind of like it's stuck together it's not just fall apart and uh, I, I don't want the pieces to be like here and here so that's why I use the, the bullet soft constraint and the uh, next step is I, I just imported the simulation here top import I just cached 
simulation one frame again I just choose one frame I did some edit because some parts need to be just adjusted I, I wasn't satisfied with the simulation results so I just did a little bit edit on this just two pieces the pitch I think I didn't change anything yeah this is just nothing did nothing this is just scatter this is the the part I did the uh, created the spiders the structure so I just simply use the scatter node and scatter like 500 points and after that I just use the point replicate and if I zoom in you can see this is the previous one this is the next so I just replicated like I did a little bit uniform scale and the 20 points for so it's mean we have a 20 extra point for each point we have for example we have like 517 here and here we have 10,000 in 34 so and here again just simple I just use connected adjacent pieces so if I activate that you get this mess but if you do and here in the option you just can adjust an adjacent points so the last option here I just you know just change the search point radius and max search points to get the look I want and also after that this is smooth is the magic so you get very nice structure so the filter quality I just crank it down because I didn't want that mess I have from this this connected adjacent pieces so I just turn it down so you get very smooth and more soft and beautiful result and here is the string you change it it depends what you want to do so you can just change it and that's it is very basic so nothing too complicated and another one is I need to connect this one to to the cloth emulation I had here so I use as a ground here collision for my simulation so I just scatter a few points just deleted the rest because I don't want to connect to every all and all the points together I just want the points around the robot and I just merge with this scatter I have for the robot here so here is just the result let me change the point size as you can see and just deleted the attributes all the attributes because I had simulation so I just I click here as you can see a lot of attributes on the points so I just deleted the attributes and again I just used connected adjacent pieces and you get this structure again and merge it with the rest of the scatter around here so this is one scatter just for here another one for the robot and this the area around the robot and when I and then I merge that in a simple fuse to connect the points together the overlapped points and again this is smooth is the magic you just use the smooth so if, if, if you check here is the result and now if I merge it with the previous robot spider web so I get this result very simple and nice so I just did the simple fuse to make sure everything is connected together and yeah here's the just the basic setup for the spider web and here I just just didn't scatter because I want a very small like a uh, water drops or something I don't know to have on <laughs> have on the web so this is the out points here is the, the web so I'm just going out here so in the webs I just imported the webs and here is just attribute delete I removed all the attributes and here let me turn on so this is this, this spider web so you know actually it's not perfect so I could just use a like a race up to have a nice you know collision between the spider web and the robot but this was uh, actually like we're in very quick in I think like three to maximum four hours project to just do something you know so it wasn't that kind of like R&D project because I was just <laughs> was bored I just wanted to do something quick you know and just do the rendering 
and here is a drop I just I instanced on the web so if I go in here it's just a simple sphere a mountain a very basic setup we just did a transform here to make to have it smaller and then I just instanced let me just show you I just imported you know the points from the scatter from here this one and I just did an attribute, attribute, uh, attribute randomize and so here is just randomize the p-scale dimension is one of course because it's just it's not a vector so it's just a float the minimum value maximum value so and here I just did the normal randomize the normal direction because I, I, I wanted to the drop to be randomized you know the rotation or something and yeah that's it and let me just show you the the textures I did in substance this is for this is the actual base color this is the normal and this is the roughness map and I don't know why I cannot load yeah so it's loaded now really you know this I have a little bit of scratches here and there and yeah and this is the roughness for a spec and let me show you the shaders it's very basic so this is all the shader I have only three this is for the web this is for the water water drop and mm, this is just for the robot I just as you can see I just imported the texture like here Figure is just the base color I just connected and here is a, another texture for reflection roughness and I just simply did a color correction here also for the bump map I use the tangent space and normal I just loaded the normal here and here is so this is just the, the for the for the robot as you can see it's very simple nothing complicated and here is for the web and again this is not something very special or complicated shader is you know a little bit less diffuse and the roughness in diffuse and reflection and re yeah just just that I didn't change anything else even here and this is the water as you can see I just choose the, the preset and redshift you can just choose the water and yeah just assign it and finish and the beauty is come from the cameras you know if I actually I played like maybe one hour to, to find a good angle for the render so this is just one and the second camera is from this angle I actually I uh, maybe this one is better than this one I'm, I'm not sure so it depends but if you see check the camera the focal is 400 that's why we get a nice bokeh let me show you the renders yeah this is the, the bokeh we get so and actually I ju just the only thing I changed here is the focal length and the f-stop very important because I wanted to have a defocus in render not in comp so, and yeah I just turn on uh, the depth of field here in redshift camera and and also for the bokeh image I, I if you see here the my render if you check the render I have a little bit like chromatic aberration here so for this one I just use the bokeh image I just downloaded for internet so I have found you just can just search Google and find uh, some nice very small size images so I just use this one uh, for bokeh so I have to have a little bit color edge bleeding and that's it and just a little bit exposure if you want to play in render and it depends on you can do it in comp later and the, the lights I think I just only use this dome light and for this one I just use the studio light I just downloaded from HDRI heaven 
Mm, yeah, this one. Let me check the number. Studio small three. Mm, I think it's this this one six. This one. I use this one, but. Unfortunately, I cannot zoom here to show you the maybe here we have a preview no so yeah that's it so this is just instance for the webs I just let me talk about the setting on the webs how I render the webs so here I just in the redshift object tab if you come you come here and you can see we have strands. I just turn on the render object as a strands and just a strand type to cylinder max tessellation. I think by default is six or eight. Yeah, it's eight. So I just did two. I didn't want too much tessellation. And here is just a global scale multiplier, so it acts like a thickness for the strands. So basically, that's it. Uh, I did this project in Redshift version 2.6 I think but now I'm running Redshift version 3 so I think I did a test render before but the look was completely different you know I can see here completely different from what I have from from this render so I d I'm not sure what, what is wrong really with this scene because maybe it's because I change my rich version but I'm not sure so and the render setting let me just check the render setting very quickly so I just did the samples which is max sample mix and sam mean sample so the reason I use the max sample like 2048 is because because we have a very shallow depth of field so I, I, I wanted to have a cleaner result so also here the sampling override I uh, just override it you know the old sample for the light and stuff so refraction and reflection then I could go even higher like maybe 1024 for each to get more even more cleaner result and I just did the in the global illumination I just turn on the, the brute force and max ray 128 so Basically, that's it. Um, thank you for watching.